let's go to Liz in Charleston, South Carolina. Hey, Liz, what's going on? Hi, Dr. John. Thank you so much for taking my call. Hey, thank you for giving um, me a shout. What's going on? Um, I was calling to ask, how do I have the conversation with my husband? Hey, do me a favor. Before you, before you go, two things. Talk, okay. talk directly in the phone. And I can already hear there's something really close to the surface. Are you okay? Yeah. Take a deep, deep breath for me. And just hold it. And now let it out. Is where you're calling from safe? Yes. Cool. I promise <laughs> to be safe too. And I will only make fun of Ben in the control room. That's it. You got it? Okay. All right, cool. Okay. So how do you have the conversation? And that's, um, keep going. That I am a survivor of sex trafficking. Mm. Mm. Um. Uh, I just, I'm. Uh, so are you married and your husband doesn't I, know? Correct. Okay. Um. How long have you been married? Um, a little under a year. How long did y'all date December. before then? Um, since 2018, summer of 2018. Oh, so y'all been together for a while. How old are you? Yeah. Um, I'm 28. 28. Okay. You like this guy? Yes. <laughs> a lot. Is he super good looking? Yes. <laughs> He is for like for real. Are you just saying that? Sometimes you talk to somebody no, and you're like, "Hey, is that guy good? Your husband good looking?" And she's like, "Oh my gosh, yes!" And you see him, and you're like, "Nope, no, he's not." Right? <laughs> he for real what? is. <laughs> Man, how'd you meet him? Um, we go to the gym together. Oh, gross! You're at the gym <laughs> just flexing, and he was like doing tricep extensions, looking at you. Yeah, pretty much. Hey. <laughs> Totally side conversation. I know we're in the middle of a heavy thing. How? How do you? How do? How do you? How do you meet somebody at a gym? How does that happen? Um. Like, how? How's the, who well, made the first move? This is one of um, life's great mysteries to me. Um. Inadvertently, me. I um. Thought- <laughs> That's so ridiculous, Liz. I said I was going to laugh at you, but I lied. What do you mean, I- inadvertently? Um, I thought he was, we were leaving the gym at the same time, and I thought he was asking me for my phone number, but he was actually talking to the person behind me. Um, That's the most preposterous. So you just walked up to this super hot guy leaving a gym, and you handed him your number, and you're like, oh, are you just asking for the <laughs> Yeah, he was actually talking to the guy behind him because they were going to work out together. Um, Listen, Liz, yeah. that may be one of the greatest moves I've ever heard of. I've heard of crazy moves. That's legit. I've never heard of that one. Where you just walk up to a stranger and you're like, oh, hey, he, um, you were just asking for my number here. <laughs> That's a baller yeah, move, Liz. And then he clearly was like, okay. Yeah. And then he called you or texted oh. you or whatever? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, um, that's how the gym <laughs> date is, is, is born. And that could have gone sideways, but it didn't. So now ended up with a marriage. So. All right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank you for solving life's great mystery. I will now give you free advice on whatever your challenges are. How about that? It's a good trade. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So you're with this guy. Let's reverse engineer this. You've been with him for a couple of years. He's awesome. He's wonderful. You care about him. You love him. You married him. You are building a life with him, and you've got this big, deep, dark, hidden past, right? Tell me about what happened in the past. Um, I was in a relationship with someone for four years mm-hmm. um, that was abusive in every single way you could think of. Um, and it just like tiny little things just kept 
escalating and escalating and tell me what that means before i knew it tell me what that means um it it means like stuff he i guess the way he like introduced this to me was that he was like well i just want to have a threesome and of course like being in a relationship and wanting to um make your partner happy that's kind of how that started and then so slowly your boundaries just got pushed further and further in in little increments right yeah and before i knew it he was he reached out to an escort service and started pimping me out through their service and ultimately how were you able to transition out of that? Um, I ran away. Mm. I, I mean, like he had told me that the only way I was ever going to get out is that if we, like, essentially both, he was going to like take himself, kill me, and then take himself out. Sure. Um. And so, for uh, for the for the person listening, wondering. How does this happen? I would, and, and it's easy to think, I would just do this, or I would, I would just, um, what I'll let you know is there are power dynamics at play in these situations. There is really challenging, um, really tough psychological um, things that happen, physical things that happen when you're in a highly abusive and toxic relationship. And you just said it perfectly. Suddenly you wake up and one day you're highly uncomfortable with the next step, but it will keep you safe today. And then you become yeah. highly uncomfortable with the next step, but nobody's going to get hit. And yeah. it's easy to say, hey, I'll just call so-and-so, but not if somebody's got your cell phone, right? Or they're paying for your bill. or so. It's one, not one of those things that, yeah. You just wake up one day and you're flipping through Netflix and someone's like, hey, I got an idea. It's not how it works, right? And so I want everyone exactly. l- listening to this to understand the physiological, the psychological, the biological pathway. The way this works is not a simple, oh my gosh, just it's not, right? And then suddenly, yeah, you find yourself underwater and that water comes up around you and you're chained to the floor and all of a sudden you're drowning, right? And you ran away. Tell me about what that looked like. Um, I knew he had to be in another city about two hours away from where we were living, um, so that I had about a five to six hour window, um, to pack up my dogs and all, anything I could fit in my car and take with me, um, so I I did. I dropped my dogs off at a hotel and told them what was going on, that I was running away from an abusive relationship, and I just needed a place to drop my dogs off while I tried to get as much of my things out of my house as I could. And can we pause right um, there? Just, again, for the listener, if you are have never been trapped in an abusive or traumatic relationship, often... I've seen people who will hold their dog or their cat in a way that is a, it's like holding a life raft, right? These weren't yeah. just your dogs. These were your last, last thread connected to reality, right? Yeah. This is the and, only safe thing you've got. So I, again, I'm trying to, I'm trying to play by play this for the listener. Um, yeah. Man, you think like, just leave your dogs and run, man. That's all I got. Right. Yeah. Um, and when you're in a fire, you hang on to that teddy bear with all you got, right? So, okay, so you dropped your dogs off, you run away. Where did you go? Um, I stayed at the hotel long enough to get my things. I actually broke into a storage facility um, and wound up calling the owner once I got a hold of them because I lived in the middle of nowhere and they don't just, like, sit at the facilities. Mm-hmm. Um. And was like, hey, this is what I'm doing. I'll pay you when I can. Um, 
But I knew if I left my dogs, he would find a way to like hold hold that over me and of course yeah. know that I'd be protective of them and threaten to hurt them and <laughs> and so um, fast forward. Did you end up going to the police? Did you end up going to a care shelter? How did you get um, into a place where you started dating again? You started going to the gym again. You uh, started like, how, tell I, me about that journey. Yeah, I um, I moved back home to my parents. Um, did you talk to them about all this? Uh, I talked to them about the abuse, but I've never actually told them the extent of it. Okay. Um, I don't. I don't know, like, part of me doesn't want to put that on them, even though, like, you know, they're my parents, and I, that's what they're there for, but I, I guess it's the same thing of, like, now feeling the need to tell my husband, like, I don't want to keep this, like, huge secret from him, but at the same time, like, how do I dump something that big on him yeah. or anyone I care about? Because they can me. First and foremost, man, I'm so sorry. You've got one beautiful, precious life. Somebody stole a big chunk of yours, and I'm sorry. And I know that doesn't make it go away. I know that doesn't make it better. But right now, when you're just sitting there in a pool and don't have any water in it, and you just got your face in your hands, I want you to know I'm sitting there right next to you. It sucks. I hate that. I hate that. So, the demon of abuse, the reason abuse is so evil, besides the, the power dynamics and the actual pain that that abuse causes, is it weaponizes the only thing that makes us whole, that makes us people, which is relationships. The only thing that makes us able to function, our hearts literally beat right, to make mm-hmm. them, right? And your brain is going to do everything it can to protect you from that ever happening again, right? And so it's going to create all, all universes for you that you live in and can navigate, and it's going to really build a n- nice, big, concrete bunker around what happened and drop into the ocean, and only you know it's there. Except everyone around you knows something's there, they just don't have any clue as to what it is, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so at some point, sooner rather than later, you're going to have to choose wholeness and connection over secrets. And you know that, right? Yeah. It sounds like you're there. Have you ever told this to anybody? Have you ever met with a counselor or a trauma psychologist? Have you ever worked through what actually happened? Um, I tried to meet with a counselor one time, and I don't know. I don't know if I just didn't click with her or what. Hey, I'm going to stop response. you right there. Okay. This is the third person you've told me about that's not your abuser. And it's the third apology you've made for your interaction with that person. And a hallmark of an abused person is somebody who thinks every relational inconsistency, every relational issue is their fault. They screwed something up. And so if nothing else you get from this phone call is, you hang up the phone, and for the rest of your life, you stand six inches taller. You got me? Yeah. You're a strong, brilliant, beautiful, brave woman. Period. Okay? Okay. So it may be that you didn't click with it. Maybe the counselor sucked. Maybe this is a big, like if you haven't worked with people who do trauma, they don't, you know, you take special classes for this in grad school, right? This isn't just part of the curriculum, right? Um, And it may be that... You don't want to burden your parents, but it may be like they're the only ones that can walk alongside you. Maybe you don't want to burden your husband. That's what he signed up for. Now, this is big, right? He didn't know these secrets are coming, <laughs> but he said for better or worse. Sickness and health, yeah. right? Whew. So you went and saw a counselor. It, what was her response? Um, I'm just shaking my head here because I can already feel it coming. <laughs> She pretty much told me that I sounded um, like I was over the situation and um, 
that I was that I was fine. Like, um. So one day, <laughs> when you don't have any more video games to play, just reach out to the whatever licensing board is in that community or that state and file on her or him for being a terrible, unethical counselor. Because that person doesn't have the right to see any more people. Okay. Because that person's going to hurt other people. Good grief. Oh, sounds like you're good, man. Shake it off. All right, high five. <laughs> wow. Are you over it now? No. <laughs> I, <laughs> I was being sarcastic. Um, I know, clearly. <laughs> oh, man. So, here, here, so here's what you've got ahead of you. You've got a number of um, challenging sessions with a trauma therapist. Whether that's EMDR, whether that's um, more adult-centered, trauma-focused cognitive behavioral therapy, whatever that looks like, relational therapy, you've got some work to do here, okay? And my promise is the theft of your life won't come back. Those years that were stolen from you, um, the innocence that was taken from you, that won't, uh, those will be there. Those happen. But what can happen? Think of it this way. You know those bricks that are in your backpack now that you carry into every relationship, every room, and even when you're just peacefully laying there on the couch watching TV, sometimes your heart will just spin up on you, and you'll or you'll see some guy in a mall who reminds you of some way somebody looked at you, whatever the thing is. I want you to know those bricks that you're carrying around that, that literally bend you over and, and lean you down, like, right? They make you crouch over because you're so exhausted. And every relationship you go into... You go in looking up at it, right? You go in apologetically. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to. I'm so, oh, it's probably me. You can take those bricks out and you're going to stand six inches taller. And here's the beautiful part. You can redeem that stuff. The bricks become the pathway that you walk on. And equally as important, it becomes the pathway your kids walk on, your neighbors walk on, making meaning of this thing, grieving it and healing from it. And I'm telling you right now, you can heal. You can grieve it hard and you can't heal, but you got to have other people in your life, right? Yeah. So my recommendation on this is yes, you've got to tell your husband. Does he know you were in a really abusive relationship in the past? Yes. Okay. To what extent? Um, he knows that my ex was um physically abusive as far as hitting me um i have a burn mark on my arm um that he knows he he did that um he knows that he raped me um so he knows this isn't like an evil guy by the way is this guy in jail oh yeah uh he's dead okay that's a that's a that's another call liz um (laughs) yeah hey and here's another weird thing that most people don't know that probably messed you up, didn't it? It did. Yep. People yeah. think that, oh, um, that guy who was evil and hurt me is dead. Hooray. That's not how that works either, right? There's a part of you that is, that's a whole other trauma, right? Yeah. So here's what yeah. you, I'm not going to say to your husband. You do, but that's not the point of this call. You owe this to you. I want you to sleep all night. And I want you to laugh from your guts. And I want you not to have to scan every room for who's coming next for Liz. And that's what healing looks like. Okay. I want you to be able to eat a whole meal. I want you to be able to, your husband to say some freaky thing and be like, hey, you want to try this in the bedroom? And I I don't want every alarm you have to go off. I want you to be able to go, (laughs) all right, weirdo. You know what I mean? I want you to be able to engage him in that way. And I know you do too. And so the healing starts. Here's the thing. You've told him more than you think you have. Right? Now you feel this big, giant, deep, dark secret. And it is. It's a big secret, right? And he's going to be understandably shaken to his core. Right? Yeah. He is going to be. He's going to be frustrated. He's probably going to say, why didn't you tell me? Why would you lie to me? All that stuff is fair. And... He already knows a big chunk of it. 
He knows that you've stared evil in the eye. He just doesn't know how far evil dragged you down the road, right? And so here's my recommendation. My recommendation is you let him know, hey, I'm going to go do some hard trauma work. I have to, right? If you look at the ACEs, A-C-E-S, it's a trauma (laughs) scale, 1 to 10. Uh, My guess is you are really high on that ACEs score. It's a score out of 10. You can get online and take just a, we'll link one in the show notes. You can get online and get the ACEs scores. Uh, Nadine Burke Harris, Dr. Harris out of, I think she's out of San Francisco, um, really a remarkable physician and researcher. But it's really revolutionized trauma response. It's 10 questions. It's simple. And what I'll tell you is if you have four of the 10, um, your likelihood of cancer and heart disease and stroke exponentially higher and then you go five so we're not just talking about hey i'm in a bad mood I'm talking about your body starts to dissolve itself right and then you get up to six mm-hmm. seven eight so here's what i'm telling you that i want you to treat this like a medical condition you've got because it is you've got and it is a heart issue it's a it's a soul issue but it's a medical condition i want you to let your husband know hey i told you i was in an abusive relationship a dark ugly messy one there's more to it that I've just got to work through. And I am not in a place where I can talk to you about it. I promise I will. And I promise you I'm going to, do, I'm going to, I'm going to do the hard work to heal. And at some point, y'all will be in couples therapy together too as y'all walk through this. But this is a big enough deal that I want you to have some healing and strategies under your belt, some breathing techniques, some relational techniques, some connection techniques, before you lay this out, and I think it would be healthy to have a, another counselor or another person in the room with you, whether it's a therapist, a psychologist, or, or the like. I have been in these rooms when a wife finally tells a husband something. Nothing this, this serious, this, this, this um, traumatic, but some pretty tough stuff, and it's just good to have other people in the room. Um, it adds a, it adds a whew, right, um, and there's just a level of safety in that room. Okay, so the the truth telling starts today. The truth telling starts this weekend with, hey, you know how evil this was. It's worse, All right? There's stuff I'm coming to terms with that I was a part of that I got dragged through that um, I'm still messing with and I've got to go see somebody. Y'all got a budget for this. This is going to be a part of your life for a season. And I want you to find a good trauma counselor in your area, Okay. And be very okay. specific about that. Um, what a lot of trauma victims like your experience, especially sex trafficking, um, sexual abuse, they become very, very strong and very, very good at being who, what they need to be to be safe in a certain situation. Because you've been in a lot of unsafe situations, fair? Yes. Yeah. So your, your superpower is contortionism, right? Um, psychological, you can become whatever you need to be to be safe in a situation, do whatever you got to do to get out of that room alive, right? Yeah. Now, the hard part is learning how to be vulnerable again. And you're just going to have to get somebody to walk alongside you. Do you promise you'll do that for Liz? Yes. Okay. You're at a point where you can't do this by yourself. And Fast forward a year, fast forward six months, you go do some really hard trauma work, some scary, but with a great professional, some good trauma healing. You learn some skills, how to take back control of your body, right? And then fast forward to your husband's in this room and y'all have this conversation. and You've got a therapist that you trust in there or two. I've been a part of one, there was two of us in there. Um, and you have this conversation with your husband. In your heart of hearts, what's he going to do? Hug me and cry. That's exactly right. I think he's going to hug you until you can't, until you got to say, hey, like I got to breathe, right? Yeah. Sounds like a guy that loves you to the moon and back. He fell for your stupid, hey, I thought you asked for my number line for crying out loud. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Sounds like you won the lottery with this guy. I want you to love Liz as much as he does. Okay? 
Okay. And I want you to recognize you're going to have to learn new skills to do that. You're a brave woman. Thanks for being vulnerable with a million strangers that you don't know and walking people through. Man, it reminds me of this old... Reminds me of this old um, quote. It's attributed to 50 different people, but be nice to everybody because behind the smiles and behind their eye crinkles, everyone's fighting battles that you have no idea they're in war. Right? And I know I butchered that quote, but man, you don't know if the person you, next to you who had a rough boyfriend once, man, you don't know the depths of hell that she may have traveled. Thanks for being brave, Liz. So grateful you escaped. I'm so grateful that you had people along the way, the hotel owner, the people who said, you're safe here. Pets are safe here. So glad you met a guy who loves you for who you are. So glad you've been brave to talk to him about your abuse thus far. And that you're going to take the next step and begin a healing journey. Good for you. Good for you. Good for you. And by the way, if you are married to somebody, if you've been dating somebody who's experienced deep, deep trauma, if they ever have the courage to come tell you what's going on, what happened, man, um, the first response is always, I love you, and a hug. And that's about it. Questions come later. Discussions come later. Uh, how come? That's all later. The best thing to say in that moment is nothing. But weep with them, sit with them, hug them if that's safe, and don't let go. Thank you so much for your call, Liz.